taken from us because we were violated. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So as you're as you're speaking, it's like the Holy Spirit is speaking to me as well. And to say that as women, when we come into the body of Christ, whether we're dating or not, we got to get to the point where we say, you know what? Let me love God more. Yes. Let me. And then towards the end, I reached out to one of the seniors, one of the leaders there. I said, I'm ready to give my life to the Lord. Amen. And he says, really? He was happy. He said, really, young man? I said, yes, I'm tired. <laughs> and he said, okay. He was, oh, man, I'm happy for you, son. I went back there, threw off my clothes, put the, the baptism gown on. Mm -hmm. And then I got baptized. And when I got baptized, this is... This is where, you know, when I tell people to share their call by God, you know, podcast, when, you know, Shut when they come it. on a call by God podcast and I want them to share their experience when they got saved. What I felt when I went under that water. I, I sometimes wondered, like, is that how every saint feel? Because that's how we supposed to feel. It's something that goes inside of you. That something is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I, that's that that love that I felt. I got baptized out with the old in with the new in with the new. The Holy Spirit came inside of me. Mm. It's like all the demons that had control of me, held me captive under bondage, gone mm. clean house. And I have to be detailed like that because I don't want people to think that baptism is just to get wet. Mm hmm. God is doing something spiritual. What God did for me that day on July 26, 2009, mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. Why do you think when we're on Call by God podcast and I, we tell people, how was you, that experience like? Tell us more. I've never felt love like that before. I thought I loved that first girl. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I got under that water and I felt the Holy Spirit God in me, Jesus, I broke down. I said, God, this is what love feels like. I love it. Mm -hmm. God, like he told Isaiah, he took those curse words out of my mouth. <laughs> gone. Mm -hmm. Alcoholism, gone. Because I know you. there's some folks that are still coming around you. You know, I, I don't want you to. So God, in this, through his sovereignty, through his power, he had to get rid of some things away from me. There's some things that still stayed, but there's some things that he took completely away from me from that baptism. Now, it don't have that's not everybody's story. Some people, they go through phases where they still I was and about I understand. To tell you right now. That's not my story. No, I'm just saying <laughs> I still I still have issues. But what I'm saying is that I was a clubber. Mm -hmm. Folks used to come around my house to drink mm -hmm. and talk about some stuff. God took the taste out of my mouth. Like I said, through his sovereignty, he can't he, st he still can't be doing that and chill around them because mm. he might have a taste for it. And at some point, they're going to draw him in back in. Yeah. So God, he God is wise. Absolutely. God is wise. He's the wisest of the wise. God, God of the said, wise of the wise. I know what I'm going to do for my servant. Gone. Yeah. I, I, man, Adney, I was so clean. I had a pep in my step. I never felt so like inside of my body. That's what baptism. <laughs> baptism is spiritual. But the thing, the thing I want you to understand is this. You had an experience with God before going down in the water. Not many people have that experience. That's true. That's right? true. So your spirit was already prepared for mm. the reception of the Holy Spirit. Mm. A lot of us don't get that. And I'm being honest. Mm. I didn't get that. Mm. I knew that God was drawing me to the church. Right, right, right. I, I went different churches, even churches with female pastors. And right, I'm like, I don't right. like this. I hated churches with musical instrument. Right. Right. Why? Why do I, why did I despise going to a church with musical instrument? Mm -hmm. Right. Because God is preparing me yes, for something. Yes, yes. I walk into a church that sings a cappella, and I'm like, I'm home. But the experience you just shared, I didn't have. Mm. 
So wow. I want people to understand we're not all going to have the same experience, yes, right? Yes, yes, With Nick, God had to sh- look, Negro, you are agent of Satan. I need to change you into an agent for me. Yes. yes. So I'm going to give you a different experience. So when you speak to people, when you share your story, when you evangelize, you know why you're doing it. Because right. this was already given to you as an assignment. Right, right. Right. A lot of us don't get that. Mm. A lot of us get to a point, again, if anybody listens to my call by God journey, they don't know. I bust the windows out of a dude's car and just say, God, where are you? Mm. Wow. Like, where they do that at? Right, (laughs) Right? right, right. So everybody's journey is different. Right, right. But on that journey, we can't stay the same. That's right. Right? Right. On that journey, we have to realize I can Mm -hmm. no longer allow me to operate the way I once did. Right. So what do I do? Mm -hmm. Like I'm listening to you and it's a, it's, it's really a convicting message for me. It's really a conversion for me. Mm -hmm. I did not realize that God was going to use you today to say, Adney surrender. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? For you to real, for me to really understand how the Holy Spirit operates, surrender. Yeah, and that's what people have to understand. It ain't about asking Jesus in your heart. It ain't about listening to all mm. these different preachers. It is truly about reading the Word of God, yes. hearing the truth of God, obeying obeying mm-hmm. the truth of God, yes. getting baptized mm-hmm. and becoming a new creature. Right, right. You are the epitome of what it means of becoming a new creature. Praise God. Glory to God. You understand Glory what I'm saying? Yes. Like people don't understand. Like if people come into your house and spend some time with you, they'd be like, yeah, this brother is really a Christian because. <laughs> oh, man. Like, on, no, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. Not nah, because people don't understand the when when Paul says stuff like, you know, your speech changes the yeah. way you carry yourself. When people are talking about you to somebody, you say. Just pray for them. You yes. don't join in the conversation. Right. Some people be like, oh, tell me more. You <laughs> yeah. say, no, let's just pray for them. My brother is going through something. My sister is going right. through something. That is the Christian walk. The Christian yeah. walk doesn't join in. Right. The right. Christian walk says, hey, how about we just pray for them now? Right, right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. The Christian, like, that is Christ. Yeah. Period. We're, we're all growing every day. And that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Understand. Sometimes it takes you hearing a person's call by God story for you to say, wow, that's what you want from me, God. He's not Jesus, but you use him to say, this is how I want you to behave. Mm. When you went down in that water, you should have felt that spirit enter into you. Yeah. I f- yeah. You understand what I'm <laughs> right, saying? Right. Not many of us get that. Yeah. Why? Yeah, I, it's I, so let, let me say this, Annie, because it's one thing to get baptized, but it's another thing to get attacked. It's it's a blessing to be a child of God, Adney. Um, And I know people are waiting for like, tell us more. What happened after baptism? What happened to the girl? Attack. <laughs> <laughs> so after baptism, I went home happy, excited, joyful. My parents bashed me. Mm. What are you doing? You got to take a class. I said, no, no, you're not supposed to take a class to obey the gospel. It don't work like that. So maybe I'm helping some folks out there. So go (laughs) ahead and explain what that is about. Uh, I guess our, you know, our upbringing, you know, when it comes, especially to our culture, the Baptist church, yeah, they believe that you got to take a class in order to encourage be included into the family of God. Mm -hmm. Like you got to be educated, (laughs) go through a series of classes, courses, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't work like that. (laughs) No. If you hear faith, come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, you believe in Jesus Christ, that he is the son of God. If you are confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, if you repent of your sins, 
and be baptized, then God will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you have to walk faithful unto death. Faithful unto death. Yeah. That's Bible. Yeah. It had it didn't say nothing about no class. And I told my parents, I said, like, look, I said, show me in the Bible where you see class. Oh, no, no, no. It's not in there. If it's not in there, then why are you doing it? <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> Go ahead. So when I got saved, when I got saved, my girlfriend called me. Keep in mind, she didn't talk to me for three weeks. She didn't talk to me for three weeks. She called me after my salvation. Mm. So it's like God moved her out of the way. She upset. Take away that distraction. Yeah, yeah. Because mm. remember, I confessed to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, you know, you always in a man. She ain't bothered with me for three whole weeks. Mm. Put it to the side. And after my baptism, ring. I'm like, ain't that something? Keep, she ain't saved. She in the world. And that's the enemy. I said, wow, that's crazy. But I already put two and two together. So um, I think God already had given me the sermon, a lot of insight. Because if I'm writing this stuff when I'm lost, that's why I tell my sister, God empowered me. By before his yeah you even be and that's why i'm saying yeah. for you it was different it was different because yeah. since you're from birth losing your mom yeah going to the bahamas the foundation that god set for you and right. that's the thing oh thank you holy spirit that's for men yeah what your walk is is what Every single man must experience yes. from God yes. because now you're in tune with your creator. Right. You become in alignment as mm. a man right. with your creator. When mm. you become in alignment right. as the man, you lead the woman, mm. you lead the church, you lead the children you transform the world. Right. If you as a man cannot come into alignment with Jesus, right. if you're battling in your spirit constantly to become wow. the man that God has called you to be, that means that you are fighting God and God is sending you wow. signs. God is sending you people. God is putting you into situations right. and you're fighting him mm, because mm, the mm. key is the man is the one that grows the church. Mm, mm, mm. The church needs to stop being feminized if the men would stand up. Mm. So God prepared wow. you from yes. the Praise moment God. you lost Praise your God mom to say, this is your journey. Mm. This is your walk. This is how you lead your home. Again, God discipled you. Yeah. yeah. Right. We talked about that earlier. Too. Showing you how a husband is with his wife and how he goes to worship with his family. Yeah. And I want to talk about that, too, the importance of community and the importance of church, because a young man may be listening to this and they may or older, man. Or older man, they be like, how a person got saved and how everything got in alignment like that. And that's the part that sometimes we overlook because some people don't know the how. How do I get to that? I see it on display, but I don't know how. Right. So when I got saved, my girlfriend called me. But I also received another call, Brother Daniels, mm. the minister. And I'm like, wait a minute. The minister calling me? I was happy, Andy. Mm. <laughs> yep. Andy, I was happy. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. That's why I appreciate. I know. That's why I know he's a true man of God because God would not have, like, God not going to talk to me. God, I mean, God talked to me and God, like, put me under the right leadership. Absolutely. God wouldn't lead me astray. Why nope. would he talk to me to give away all that stuff that I was doing? To be under that. Yeah. That's why I know it was divine. Yeah. God put me under the right leadership. God yep. said, Nick, I'm going to put you under this dude. This dude loved me. Yeah. You you need to be under him. Yeah. And then that's why like when people, I'm like, look, man, don't lead a man of God alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. lead, that's why I have a heart for preachers, by the way. Yeah. But anyway, let me just say what I got to say. So Brother Daniels called me. He reached out to me. He said, um, hey, man, you the cleanest thing in the building, man. And that's what yeah. he always, he always say. And I was out at I was at work when he called me and I was smiling. I said, God, thank you. Using using Brother Daniels, the man of God that reached out to me. That was encouraging. Yeah. I'm I'm a new babe. I don't know Christian stuff. I don't know church stuff. I don't know kingdom stuff. I don't yeah. know. But the thought that he went out his way just to give me a call and to congratulate me that I'm in a body of Christ, that meant a lot. Mm. And I tell him that to this day. Like, thank you, brother. Like, thank you for reaching out to me. Cause all I had was worldly friends. I didn't have anybody at that point. So I'm still getting to know people in the church. So my girlfriend called me 
you know, I went over to her house, and then I don't know what what, what, was, what in was in her, her heart, mm-hmm. but she wanted to hug me, and I said, no, I can't hug you. Mm. I said, I can't hug you. I said, because I'm saved now. Mm. I changed my life. And she like, what you mean you saved? You changed your life. You got baptized. I said, yeah, I changed my life. And she got jealous. Mm. She said, I'm jealous. I said, what do you mean you're jealous? She said, I always wanted to give my life to Jesus. Mm. But at the same time, I'm thinking, if I'm thinking, wait a minute. When I was doing the dirt and you never told me that. Like, we just did our dirt. Mm -hmm. But she said, yeah, I'm jealous. And I said, well, look, the only thing I could tell you, you can come to church with me. If you want to come to church, we'll meet up at church and you could do that. Mm -hmm. And then so she started coming to church bringing her daughter and then 30 days later she got baptized hallelujah praise god right hallelujah she got baptized so when she got baptized so as a woman she's probably looking at it like okay my ex-boyfriend is saved i'm saved the right thing to do is probably get in covenant that's what a a, a normal person would do Mm -hmm. i love her she loved me we're christians you're crazy you're crazy yeah i'm a christian yeah let's get married god is like no not so fast not so fast. don't you dare Mm -hmm. because god already gave me discernment she was so focused on me while i'm focused on god god said nick you care enough for her soul because if she love you more than me if she love like you more than me it's gonna be a problem it's gonna be a huge problem it's gonna be a huge problem so i said okay father i'm not gonna mess with her she's my sister in christ and i treat it as such that's why i'm not big on titles Mm -hmm. when you start labeling stuff beware girlfriend boyfriend you claiming ownership now yeah god don't look at that stuff god god don't honor boyfriend and girlfriend Mm-mm. that's that's not in biblical language that's brothers it's either your husband or wife, or wife. That's period it. or that's your brother and sister in christ that's period it. yeah so god already i put that in my heart yeah you ain't gonna have no girlfriend <laughs> girlfriend you gonna have you a wife yeah yeah so i would always say hey sister so-and-so hey sister that's why i say all the sisters mm-hmm. like even if i was like interested in a girl Hey, sister, sister, like, I would not say, oh, yeah, I want to date you Mm-mm. or you going to be my girlfriend. I, I would not dare put that out of my tongue. Yeah. I would not dare because what the one thing that I want to do, because I know women are emotional creatures. And I didn't want to be a stumbling block to my girl, my ex-girlfriend, because mm-hmm. I knew in the world, like if let's just say in hypothetically, the world, she was your ex-girlfriend in the body. She became your sister in, in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So what I didn't want to do is play with her emotions. I didn't want to say, yeah, we're still kicking it. And then next, you know, if things don't work out, I become a stumbling block. And this is my sister in Christ. Exactly. I didn't, I, I cared enough so much for her soul yeah. that I didn't even want to play well like that. I say, look, I ain't talking to no girls. I'm going to just evangelize. So that's what I was doing. So I was going out, going to Barnes and Noble, Starbucks, mm-hmm. Walmart, going to beaches. I went in front of the club that tried to destroy me. I started preaching the gospel a friend of mine, we were just preaching the gospel like seven days a week, going to work, preaching the gospel. And then um, my ex-girlfriend thought we still had things going on because she was still attached. I'm like, no, nah, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. I said, mm. I said, I'm focused on kingdom things. I said, you, I said, look, you can't, this is, it's not, no. Mm-hmm. And then it wasn't until like year two, maybe leading into year three after our baptism, God convict her mm-hmm. that she was focused on me. God said, the reason why like you ain't getting ahead, you focus on man. I'm your father. I'm your God. You need to focus on you busy on the relationship that you had in, in the world. Yeah. It's not going to fly with me. So God convict her big time. And I remember, I remember, never forget when she told me this, she broke down and shed tears before me. She said, you know what? All these years I was focused on you. And I get it now. From this day forward, I'm going to focus on God. And at that moment, she started treating me like a brother. Mm -hmm. It was none of that relationship type stuff. She was just doing godly stuff, ministering. You know, she got a gift. Her gift is women. She was ministering ministering to young ladies. She was empowering them. She was opening her. I mean, she was always previously opening her doors for Bible studies, prayer meetings. She was doing a lot of biblical scriptures, like biblical things. And I'm like, okay. She was she was ignoring me. Not, you know, just trying to not make it seem like we still got something going on because we didn't. Mm-hmm. That's the hurdle that she had to overcome. 
And then she just took off for God. <laughs> took off. And in that third year, um, as I'm doing working for the kingdom, because I was just seeking God's kingdom. I'm seeking God's kingdom. I'm in school. I'm doing all this gospel stuff. And then God poured in my spirit. It was time for me to get married. I said that on a previous episode. God gave me that desire. I never had the desire prior. So when God, I'm like, wait a minute. Well, why do I, I desire to have a wife. <laughs> I love that you said that because growing up, I never had a desire to be a wife. I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. I wanted my mama to live with me and we was going to live in a big house and I was going to spoil her and I was going to drive him. I was going to drive a Porsche. Yeah. I'll never forget that. And when I got into a group of sisters, mm-hmm. that's all they talked about. The desire came, but it wasn't a desire from him. Mm. It was because the talk. Oh, wow. It's like being in that group was a blessing, but it was a curse. Mm. It became a curse because my focus mm. shifted from healing from my childhood trauma working for the Lord to, Oh, I want to, I want to, I want a husband. Wow. Right. And it's like, as I'm listening to you is again, like I'm telling you right now, you're convicting me through your story. Oh, no. Right. Yeah. And it, and it's not so much you convicting me is God using your story to convict me. He's saying, you need to get back to me as your first love mm. because you didn't desire that you desired purity. You desired me. You need to get back to that. Right. And that's the thing I want women to understand. Mm. We don't come into this world with a desire of marriage. We don't. Right. 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 It's given to us. You're right, What's the first right. thing parents do for their daughters? Uh, yeah. They give them baby dolls. Right. Right. And then they're mm, doing all of that. Right right? right. right. That desire is given to us. We don't come into the world with that desire. Right. Right. Some of us. It's taken from us because we were violated. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So as you're as you're speaking, it's like the Holy Spirit is speaking to me as well. And to say that as women, when we come into the body of Christ, whether we're dating or not, we got to get to the point where we say, you know what? Let me love God more. Yes. Let me serve him. Let me do what he's called me to do yes. because like I told you today, twice, two different people. And if a third one comes to me and says this to me, I will know for a fact that God called me yes. to be a minister's a wife. Minister's wife. Yeah. Right. I can't be a minister's wife if I'm operating still in my, my carnal self mm. because my husband is going to need me to be in tuned with God on his right. behalf. Right. Right. So, I never had that desire of marriage. Mm. So it's like now, and I remember talking to a friend last week and I said, I'm lonely. Mm. Where does that come from? Mm. When I have God already. Wow. I'm like, I want to start dating. But you never had that desire. Where did that come from? Wow. Right. So as you're saying this and you're what you're you're now my best friend, my ace, my Jonathan, <laughs> who was your ex-girlfriend in the world, but became your wife my in the wife. church. Yeah. Not only your wife, but your sister in Christ. She had to understand. Yeah. My focus needs to shift. Yes. Women. Listen to me and listen to me. Good. Mm. Take your shift off of your singleness. Take, I'm sorry, take your eyes off of your singleness Mm -hmm. and place your heart in God's hand. Yes. If your heart is in God's hand, the desire is going to come to you. Mm -hmm. But if it's you creating the desire, your desire is going to supersede him. Yes. Period. We always read the scripture where God says, I will give you the desires of your heart. But whose desire is he talking about? It ain't yours. Mm. You're a spirit on a human journey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So as a spirit on a human journey, whatever God put in your spirit, that's what the desire is going to be. It's about him. Yes. Go ahead. Finish. (laughs) No. (laughs) So the thing is, I oftentimes have conversations with my baby sister. You know, she's single as yourself. And then she always asks me, like, hey, bro, like, how did you handle it as a single? And 
it was difficult, but I always tell my sister, the one thing that I did, I kept myself busy um, doing the Lord's work. Like, I don't think people really understand the amount of kingdom stuff that my friend and I did when we were single. We did that for like three straight years, like nonstop. That's all we did was kingdom stuff because we cared so much for souls that we wanted people to be saved. That's a blessing. Yeah, we didn't. We 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 was like, you know what? This is not about us. We know where we came from. We want. Let's try to get as many people in the ark as we can. And that's what we did as singles. Like we were so kingdom minded that that's all we thought about all day. We really talked about God all day. Amen. Just put it like that. Amen. And then, um, you know, the enemy came here and there. But at the same time, we kept ourselves like really, really busy. So if there's a word like encouragement, I'll even tell singles. I will tell them like it's a scripture we hold on to Matthew 633. Seek ye first the kingdom of yeah. God and his righteousness and all these things will be added exactly unto you. yeah it all will come exactly it's like and that's what we did we seeked <laughs> and how does seek and look like we seek god face on a daily basis it was like nonstop. people used to say like man y'all fool for christ mm -hmm. you said what you thought this was a joke you gotta be jesus junkie yeah brother trey beard says that all the time <laughs> you gotta be a jesus I said, junkie. I said you thought this was a joke you thought yeah. we was like one of them fake Christians, nah, I say this for real. We really genuinely care about people's souls. Amen. And then so when the when people, you know, the ministry started growing and people started calling my friend and I throughout in the middle of the night telling us their problems. And I'll tell you what, like at that point I needed a help me. That's why I said that desire came. Like, that's why God I like, put out my spirit that I needed a help me. I need somebody, he needed to put me with somebody. That could build his kingdom now. Because I, I, I'm doing it by myself. Me and my friend, we're doing it by ourselves. But he said, oh, you need a wife now. Because she's going to help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you get the the girl, the 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 men, and if they have a wife, yeah, you minister together. Yeah. And, and it, that's the key. Yeah, and a lot of people don't, what I'm about to share is that my wife and I, we oftentimes joke about this. When God had put that desire in my heart, I didn't know that my ex-girlfriend would be my wife. She wasn't my first choice. She was like, I, I looked at, I'm like, yeah, I see she's doing a lot of kingdom things. You know what I did, Adney? I fast and I prayed. I needed, I needed an answer from God. Mm -hmm. I said, God, my flesh tells me, yeah, this is my ex. The right thing, the, the thing that makes sense to humans is to go for her. Mm -hmm. But what makes sense to you, God? And that's it. Yeah, and that that's what I did. So I said, you know, God, I'm going to go on a fast. Like, I didn't tell nobody. I said, I'm just going to go on a fast, and I'm going to pray for my wife because he put it in me, and I started fasting, and I started praying. And then all the answers kept pointing back to her. But what she knows, this is what we joke about. I said, you know, hon, you know I had other selections, right? Because when he put that in me, I never looked at these girls that way before. But I'm like, this probably could be a potential. This Without even telling these girls, they probably still don't know it to this day. I'm like, this probably could be a potential. I believe if I, these are godly women, they doing kingdom things. I believe if I, they'll probably talk to me and maybe perhaps we could take it to the next level. So I had other choices. My mm -hmm. wife and I all, oftentimes joke about it. She say, I always say, yeah, Nick, if you would have chose that one. I'm like, come on, huh, don't do that. I said, but God knew what was best for us, and he put us together. He, he knew why yeah. he allowed y'all to meet in the world. Right. Because he already knew that she was the one that she chose for you. Right. And that's the thing that people don't realize. A lot of people don't realize God does still choose. Yeah. But the thing is, you have to pay attention to his choice. Yeah. Because you could say, uh, I don't think so. She would have missed it though if she wasn't in alignment. Cause you like that part. See, listen, so let's just say, let's turn the story around. If we were ex you know, exes in the world and got in the church and she was solely focused on God and not on me, it probably God probably would have God probably wouldn't delay it. Mm -hmm. God would be like, her heart is already ready. Mm -hmm. You're already there already. Why not? Her heart wasn't her there. Her heart yet. wasn't ready. Yeah. God said, like, it's like in a sense, like. If I would have married her immaturely, yeah, I don't know if we would have been together. Yeah, because because I don't know your evangelism would have interfered. Yeah, with your marriage. That's because why I said, she would have had a problem with that. Yeah, I think yeah. sometimes God is maturing people before that. 
Yeah. Because sometimes people just want to jump in. Oh, I want to be married. I want to be a husband. I want to be a wife. Be careful because although marriage is beautiful, you know, we know marriage is a beautiful thing, beautiful thing because it symbolizes and it's correlation to the church. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. But there's a price with that. That's a, a it's, that's a ministry within itself. Oh whole ministry imagine how to you're you're going out there you're sharing the word with the lost and now now you get married and that's his own a ministry yeah that has his own set of standards yeah and it's like a whole different ball game yeah that's what it's like so i think sometimes what god does he molds us and i think at the time three three years later when i got married god had to do a work in her and God also had to do a work in me although he put that desire in my heart later on because like i said i wasn't thinking about a wife mm -hmm. it was until like later and then but god at the end tell in he started doing work in her now she's mature mm -hmm. now that if y'all happen to come together it's not going to be about you it's going to be about him kingdom business yeah, exactly yeah and that's how things unfolded and that's beautiful now nick as we draw this amazing discussion and conversation to a close what is like if you were to pass, what do you want to people to say at your at your services? Like if you could write your obituary, what do you want to be known for? Wow. You know, that's a great question. And that's one of the questions that we oftentimes ask our guests. Um, Adney, I'm going to just put it this way. Um, and I hope the people that listen to this will appreciate it. And you, you said you said it earlier, like mo multiple times. Um, we are bought with a price. Um, we are just here temporarily. And a brother, uh, a brother of ours said this: We are called twice. We have the initial call, which is the gospel call, the call to salvation. And there's another call when God calls us back home. I think as children of God, we really got to put in our hearts and our minds that this is not our home, that, you know, this, this is just borrowed. We're just here just for a season. And then when we go, we go, we go back to our real home. Amen. So when I leave or when God calls me home, I want people to know that this brother right here, I know that he really loved God. Amen. He was a servant of God. He was a, a man after God's own heart. Amen. And that he really cared about souls. Amen. If there's one thing that I could say, I really care about souls. Amen. The reason why I have that heart and that passion for souls, because God kept me. Amen. Because I think about that individual that was like me. Amen. What I went through in the past. Amen. The times that I was in the dark room drinking on the verge of doing crazy stuff mm -hmm. because of the dark place that I was at. But God is like, no, nah, you heard through my whole testimony, my whole story, how God hand was on my life. Amen. You know, God told Jeremiah, I knew you before you wasn't in, in your, your mother's, mother's womb. womb. So that alone tells me that God knows us. Amen. And God's, you know, my sister said, Nick, it's not God's will. It's not God's will. I said, what do you mean? Say, bro, it's not God's will that any man should to perish, perish, but come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. So God does not want any man, but men will disobey God. Be like, I don't want to be with God. So I want men to remember me of, man, this dude really cared about souls. Amen. He really, really tried to get people into the ark. Amen. And he would do everything necessary. You'll see this dude on social media. You hear this dude at work trying to find every creative way and try to encourage individuals to get into the ark. Amen. And that's what it's about. And if you hear when Jesus Christ went back to glory, Jesus Christ gave his disciples the instructions. He told them to go out there into the world because Jesus Christ wanted his disciples to take what he's given them to share with us. Amen. And the same thing as us. So when we become Christians, God wants us to take our experiences, the gospel, to share with somebody that's in need. Amen. And that's that. So, and that's why I'm so careful the way I approach certain people because I'm like, look, you got to pray for them. Yeah. That that brother 
that you might be working with, that dude might one day might probably be your brother in Christ. Amen. You got to care enough for that person's soul. So I want people to remember that. Like if my son happened to watch this many years, you know, maybe years down the road, I want to say like, wow, my daddy really cared about souls. Amen. He really wanted people to be with God. He really wanted people to be with, you know, go to heaven because I don't think people really understand the other side. The other side, the eternal, dark side is not pretty, damnation pretty, is not pretty. And I told my sister this and maybe because I have such a strong desire for souls is because my sister asked me that um, yesterday. She said, hey, bro, when did you start thinking about like life after death? I said, I probably must have been like around my son's age, maybe younger. She said, for real? I said, yeah. I said, sis, I was thinking one day when I was a kid, I said, I must have been like seven or eight years old. Um, and I said, one day I was sleeping in the bed and I woke up in the middle of the night. And I started to think about outer space. And then I just thought that humanity just disappeared. Poof. And it's, we're no longer in existence. And I said, I cringed as a kid. And I said, wow. So we're just here on earth. And then we just poof and disappear. And we're no longer. We're just dust. But I didn't know about the spirit and soul. God, I didn't know at that age. I did not know. Mm -hmm. But what I knew about is like, okay, the flesh is just disappearing. It's no more. But, and I told my sister, I cringe. I said, but now that I understand. The love that God had for man, how he created man and how he came to redeem humanity. We ought to have that same passion, mm -hmm. the same love that God has for souls. Christians ought to have that same love Amen. for the, those that are lost. Amen. And that's what I want people to remember me at. Amen. My dear brother, you did it. I did it. You finally <laughs> shared it. your call by God journey is beautiful. And it's not beautiful in the sense of just the words that you shared. It is beautiful because you can see God throughout your whole walk. Yeah, praise and God. Praise God. And that's what I want anyone who watches this segment. Take a look at your life. If you take a look at your life, you will see God throughout all of it. From the beginning to the to the point you say you know what i'm ready to obey the gospel yeah i'm ready to give my life to jesus because i saw this brother's journey and god's hand was all in it and then i went to do an inventory of my life and i saw god's hands all in it thank y'all we love y'all god bless peace all right